Today, let's talk about an African country which used animals in their wars with colonial powers and avoided colonization. Keep watching. The infamous period of colonization began with Columbus and resulted in the mass murder of people in Latin America and Africa while transferring all the wealth of these regions to Europe. By the 19th century, Britain, Spain, Portugal and France had established strong colonies in many parts of the world. One problem the invaders faced was finding labor for sugarcane plantations in Latin America and elsewhere. The solution they found was the African slave trade. Africans who were physically strong and genetically blessed with muscles were immune to many diseases that kill others on the plantations. The white people sought the assistance of warring African tribes leading to Africans enslaving each other for profit. However, conflicts arose among the European powers over territories and slaves. The Berlin Conference of 1884-85 was an agreement among Europeans to share African kingdoms amicably between them without resorting to warfare. Ethiopia was among one of the countries listed, located between the kingdoms of Somalia, Kenya, Sudan and South Sudan. It is said to be the birthplace of modern man and part of the significant landmass known as the Horn of Africa. It was once known as Old Abyssinia and referred to as the Kingdom of Aksum in the King James Version of the Bible. Aksum, an ancient kingdom existing since 400 BC, was one of the four great powers in the world alongside Roma, Persia and China. It was rich in natural resources. During in the European colonization period, the people of Ethiopia stood together and successfully defended against invading enemies. In 1874, Ethiopia defeated the invasion of the powerful Egyptian king Ismail Pasha after two years of vigorous resistance, never losing their spirit throughout those two years. It is in the midst of these heroes that Italy, who had previously colonized Egypt with the help of the British Empire, arrived in grandeur. However, their grandeur did not last long as they were defeated in small battles by the brave Ethiopians. As the King Menelik of Ethiopia was a bastard of the old king, some descending tribes helped Italy capture a few towns in the country. But as the war intensified, the Ethiopians united behind their king and on his behest set aside their differences when it came to the occupation of the their country by Italy. They refused to let colonial powers rule over them through infighting and hundreds of thousands of commoners armed themselves with whatever weapons they could find. Oreste Baraccieri, the defeated Italian general was allowed by the king to return. However, not willing to be humiliated by the lawlifer Africans, the Italian government ordered the army to continue the war. Little did the Italians know that this time they would face a different kind of warriors at the Battle of Adua. The Ethiopian army had a unique special forces consisting of trained lions and cheetahs. The panicked Italian soldiers barely had time to run for their lives when these animals, trained over four years to obey the Ethiopians like circus animals, charged towards them on the battlefield. While some claim that this information is not entirely accurate and exaggerated, Ethiopian soldiers posing for photographs with these wild beasts, similar to the present-day Dubai Arabs, provide evidence. Furthermore, the Ethiopian use swarms of bees and wasps to chase away their opponents, taking advantage of the confusion caused by these animals and insects to win the battle. According to some sources, the Ethiopian army, armed with swords and known as shotel, defeated the heavily armed Italian army. Italy had to agree to a peace treaty and retreated with their egos hurt, but they never forgot. After several years during the Second World War, the army of the Italian dictator Mussolini tried to make another attempt on Ethiopia. As the war intensified and the Ethiopians found themselves helpless against the more powerful Italy, Emperor Haile Selassie had to flee the country in self-defense. However, he sought the assistance of his former enemy Britain. In 1941, with the support of Britain and Ethiopian guerrilla warfare, Italy was once again expelled from the country for a second time. 